government is examining the performance of the scheme and it will further get improved. We will work with the state governments to remove barriers like cross-subsidy surcharges, undesirable duties on open access sales or captive generation for industrial and other bulk power consumers. Besides these structural reforms, considerable reforms are needed in tariff policy. A package for power sector tariffs and structural reforms would soon be announced. It is proposed that several reform measures would be taken, taken up to promote rental housing. Current rental laws are archaic as they do not address the relationship between the lessor and the leasee realistically and fairly. A model tenancy law will also be finalized and circulated to the states. Large public infrastructure can be built on land parcels held by the central ministries and central public sector enterprises all across the country. Through an innovative instrument or innovative instruments such as joint development and concession, public infrastructure and affordable housing will be taken up. For ease of access to credit for MSMEs, government has introduced providing of loans up to 1 crore rupees for MSMEs within 59 minutes through a dedicated online portal. Under the interest subvention scheme for MSMEs, 350 crores of rupees has been allocated for the year 2019-20 for 2% interest subvention for all GST registered MSMEs on fresh or on incremental loans. On fresh or on incremental loans. Government payments to suppliers and contractors are a major source of cash flow, especially to SMEs and MSMEs. Investment in MSMEs will receive a big boost if these delays in payment are eliminated. Government will create a payment platform for MSMEs to enable filing of bills and payment thereof on the platform itself, thereby cutting down the time and the process itself. Encroach, uh, sorry, encouraged by the overwhelming response, the Government of India has decided to extend the pension benefit to about three crore retail traders and shopkeepers whose annual turnover is less than 1.5 crores under a new scheme, namely Pradhan Mantri Karam Yogi Mandan scheme. Enrollment into the scheme will be kept simple, requiring only Aadhaar and a bank account and the rest will be on self-declaration. We recognize that investment-driven growth requires access to low-cost capital. It is estimated that India requires investments averaging 20 lakh crores of rupees every year. A number of measures are proposed to enhance the sources of capital for infrastructure financing. A credit guarantee enhancement corporation for which regulations have been notified by the RBI will be set up in 2019-20. An action plan to deepen the market for long-term bonds, including for deepening markets for corporate bond repos, credit default swaps, etc., with specific focus on infrastructure sector, will be put in place. It is proposed to permit investments made by FIIs and FPIs in debt securities issued by infrastructure debt fund, non-bank finance co companies, the IDS, NBFCs, to be transferred, sold to any domestic investor within specified lock-in period. Corporate debt markets are crucial for the infrastructure sector, given the need to further deepen bond markets a number of measures are proposed to be taken up. To deepen the corporate tri-party repo market in corporate debt securities, 
government will work with regulators, the RBI and the SEBI, to enable stock exchanges to allow AA-rated bonds as collaterals. User-friendliness of trading platforms for corporate bonds will be reviewed, including issues arising out of capping of international security identification number, the ISIN. It's right time to consider increasing minimum public shareholding in the listed companies. I have asked SEBI to consider raising the current threshold of 25% to 35%. As a key source, as a key source of capital to the Indian economy, it is important to ensure a harmonized and hassle-free investment experience for foreign portfolio investors. Hence, it is proposed to rationalize and streamline the existing Know Your Customer, the KYC norms for FPIs to make it more investor-friendly without compromising the integrity of cross-border capital inflows. It is time to take our capital markets closer to the masses and meet various social welfare objectives related to inclusive growth and financial inclusion. I propose to initiate steps towards creating an electronic fundraising platform, a social stock exchange, under the regulatory ambit of Securities and Exchange Board of India, the SEBI, for listing social enterprises and voluntary organizations. For listing social enterprises and voluntary organizations working for the realization of a social welfare objective so that they can raise capital as equity, debt, or as units like a mutual fund. It is important to get retail investors to invest in treasury bills and securities issued by the government. Efforts made by the Reserve Bank will need to be supplemented with further institutional development using stock exchanges. For this purpose, interoperability of RBI depositories and SEBI depositories would be necessary to bring, to bring about seamless transfer of Treasury bills and government securities between RBI and depository ledgers. And for enabling this, the government will take up necessary measures in this regard in consultation with RBI and the SEBI. FDI inflows into India have remained robust despite global headwinds. Speaker, sir, global foreign direct investment flows slid by 13% in 2018 to 1.3 US 1.3 trillion US dollars from 1.5 trillion in the previous year. The third consecutive annual decline according to the UNCTAD's UNCTAD's World Investment Report in 2019. This is India's FDI flows in 2018-19 remained strong. If that was the global picture, India's inflows in 18-19 remained strong at 64.37 billion US dollars, marking a 6% growth over the previous year. I propose to further consolidate, Speaker Sir, the gains in order to make India a more attractive FDI destination. A. The government will examine suggestions of further opening up of FDI in aviation, in media, animation, ABGC, and insurance sectors in consultation with all stakeholders. 100% foreign direct investment will be permitted for insurance intermediaries. Local sourcing norms will be eased for the FDI in single brand retail sector. Single brand retail sector. It's high time India not only gets integrated into global value chain of production of goods and services, but also become part of the global financial system to mobilize global savings, mostly institutionalized in pension, 
insurance, sovereign wealth funds and so on. The government is contemplating organizing an annual global investors meet in India using national infrastructure investment fund as the anchor to get all three sets of global players, top industrialists, corporate leaders, top pension insurance sovereign wealth funds, top pension insurance and sovereign wealth funds, and top digital technology and venture funds.